Uh, number five is a company called Twilio. Uh, trades under the ticker symbol TWLO. Mate, fascinating company. I think it's worth an introduction to this business. We've talked about it briefly, but not too much. So maybe you can tell listeners, particularly those non-technology folk, what this actually does. Yeah, so very quickly, Twilio is basically, you can think of it as a sort of a uh, communications as a service platform. So um, assume that you are a business and you want to send uh, text messages, you know, when an order is received and you've paid for it and is now on its way and things like that, you can enable those text messaging um, services using something like Twilio. Um, or when, you know, if someone, like say, you know, a DoDash driver wants to call you, they want to call you through a generic number, not through their phone, you know, they can enable that sort of communication communication happening, a voice communication happening via using a Twilio. So Twilio basically provides APIs or application programming interfaces that allow developers to build tools to do communications, right? Then uh, Twilio acquired a company called SendGrid, which basically is an email marketing company. So it gets into this marketing angle of sending out emails for, you know, whether it's for, um, you know, your your e-commerce uh, uh, sale has gone through. Now it's, you know, it's on its way. It's on transit. Now it's going to be delivered by this, you know, all those sort of things. So, you know, marketing communications and follow-up using emails. Then it acquired a company called Segment, which is basically about customer data management, right? And all of these three things nicely fit together to sort of change the Twilio story from not just being a communications as a platform company, but to being a customer, an enterprise customer data company. Why is this important? This is important because of sort of changes in privacy regulations, especially as you mentioned a few times, iOS changes to privacy, which means tracking is very difficult, uh, which means it's more expensive to, um, uh, to acquire customers, mm. therefore, or reacquire customers, right? So if you have a customer, you might as well keep that customer, engage with that customers. Engaging with your customers is sort of the story that Twilio is all about. And that's centered around the segment uh, data pack platform that they're building. So that's it, it's a company that has undergone a few transitions and this is undergoing this other transition. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty large company in terms of revenue run rates. If you think about it, it, it reported about 840 million in revenue this uh, quarter. Uh, the Q4, that puts it at a $3.2 billion run rate. Uh, it significantly beat its own guidance for revenue and also the analyst expectations. Still loss-making, which you would wonder, well, well, how does a $3.2 billion run rate company actually print losses? That's because communications as a service is a lower gross margin business. So it's a gross margin on those things that's pretty low. So Twitter's overall gross margin is about 54%, which basically means on a gross profit basis, this is a about a $1.5 billion gross profit business, and they have been aggressively investing for growth. So um, it's a relatively sticky though, if you think about it, and it has high dollar cost, uh, sorry, um, dollar-based net expansion in terms of people who use it actually tend to use more over time. So the company is now at a sort of a stage where it should be able to scale. They have said that 2022 is the last year where they will be printing uh, basically an operating loss and they will tip into operating profitability in 2023 going forward. They're, they're mm -hmm. sort of advising the market that they sh should be seeing 30% plus revenue run rate growth, revenue growth. Um, for the next few years, I think they can handily do that and probably beat that because you know their organic run rate, uh, organic growth has been around the forty percent mark for some time, um, and there's some acquisitions that are driving it. Uh, and then we'll see the mix of services change over time from just messaging to these applications that have higher um, run. It's a developer first company run by um, uh, a co-founder and CEO, Jeff Lawson. Really interesting company, sort of forward thinking and really well placed given the headwinds um, caused mm. by privacy regulations and um, privacy changes in, in architected by Apple and pro probably uh, what Google is gonna do in terms of you know, antiquating cookies, that's gonna change the game in how sort of people advertise. So advertising mm. might become a more brand centric instead of you know, targeting and following people around, um, which well, works well for you know, things like Google because you, you know, search is an intent, you advertise your intent, right? So you can therefore, you can surface up ads based on that intent. That's an mm -hmm. advantage that you have if you have a search engine. Um, and but many customers would, you know, enterprises would want to actually work closely with um, 
uh, using Twilio's tool. So Nike, for example, is a customer that has done really well using their tool. So I really like this company. Uh, it's pulled back a lot because it was a big COVID play uh, to some extent because messaging was important, but that doesn't mean that messaging has disappeared. And they've given a pretty solid, uh, a, you know, Q1 uh, guidance, um, inclusive of you know the acquisitions they've made somewhere around the 45 to 47 percent uh, growth. They'll probably beat that. Um, yeah, so I really like this company. And I would not give it an A plus, but I'll give it an A for solid execution and you know a focus on um, on developers. Mm. I really like that um, the way you frame that because and particularly so just to, to rewind what we meant uh, what Anir Barn meant there on intent is basically on Facebook your ad, your ads that would follow you around because they would know what you've been looking at whereas uh, they don't really have a native search engine you don't really plug into uh, Facebook new hair dryer but you would do that on Google so then when Google reads that, they know your intent instantly. They don't need you to do things on the platform to figure out what you want. Um, so that's why a lot of advertising dollars are going. I think that's really interesting. And then things like retargeting through a platform like Twilio are going to become more important, right? Because if you can, if you know someone is a customer or had intent, like let's say they put something in their shopping cart, but they didn't go through with it, you can then send them an email or you could send them a text message if you've got that information, which becomes more important for marketers um, to, to re-engage. So it's a, yeah, it's a really interesting business. And, and one I followed quite a bit, we actually use SendGrid to send our transactional emails at Rask. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's a really interesting company. And it's also important that you pointed out that it's developer first, whereas say a company here in Australia called Whisper might be a bit different to that. Um, you know, you would write, you can actually write all your own code in SendGrid and, and, you know, do different templates based on what different customers do. So it's a really fascinating tool with APIs and all that. Mm. 